What is up everyone? So, so much to do, so little time to do so, and uh, trying to pick what I want to do first is hard. We got a lot to, a lot to do, a lot, a lot of cars to get right. But today, I want to get some work done on the Chaser because we were kind of full force on it, and we're almost there to the point where we can actually drive it around, which is where I want to get with today. So the first thing we have to tackle today is the cooling system because we need this thing to be able to maintain operating temp, and as you guys can see, there's no fan on here. That's part number one. You guys watched the previous videos, which you did because you're loyal subscribers and I appreciate all of you. Um, we had a debacle with the fan situation, right? The big thing is we want to maintain a clutch fan in here because they just work so damn good and they're simple, but we didn't have the right recipe. So I did some research, I ordered some parts, and today we're going to figure out, well, if we got the right recipe. All right, so first piece of the puzzle is the actual clutch itself, right? So before we try to use the original NAJZ clutch and the problem was the bolt pattern was different, right? Mm. Can't be having that. The turbo pumps, I don't think it's just a 2G, I think it's the turbo pumps in general are bigger. So what I got was I ordered a Supra, a Lamar 4 Supra clutch. Quick glance, the bolt pattern is the same. Next part of the puzzle, the fan was too big. The uh, non-turbo fan that we had was like this thick. I would have okay. showed you, but we just threw it away. The so non-turbo engine doesn't have an upper water neck. It was hitting this. So we needed a slimmer fan. Oh, that's way better. Yeah, to not hit that. So hopefully if we bolt this all together, it should work. So and if you guys are curious what fan this is, uh, I couldn't find a Toro V fan, which would have been perfect. Uh, this is a 7M fan out of a Mark III Supra. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the bastard precursor to the Jay-Z. If you're Ooh. curious. All right, so we have a small debacle on our hands here. Sun don't look right. So technically, they're supposed to bolt right here, right? Yeah, on those but tabs. those spots aren't wide enough. I bet a Mark IV Super Turbo fan would have been fine, but I couldn't find one. Mm. Or they were really expensive. That's what it was. This was cheap. It's like sixty bucks. If you rotate the fan, the rivets line up perfectly. See how there's threads right here? Oh. Okay, yeah, you see okay. this as a focus. See the thread. Yeah, that's where Freddie Murphy. So they're supposed to go right here, but those don't line up. But these do. Mm. So we're gonna see. As long as it's balanced, we're good, and it's all symmetrical. So but we're gonna Loctite them just in case. Okay. Anything that spins, I like the Loctite. It doesn't seem like it should work, but it is working. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if other manufacturer fans are made like this. Mm -hmm. But where's my box? That's the part number. FNT-013. Yeah, this was Rock Auto, by the way. So, yeah, dude, like, I know we're kind of making a lot of point about a damn fan, but this is a big deal. This is like one of the parts of the swap that's been pissing me off. Yeah. Choke up on the ratchet so I don't over tighten it for once. Gym tight. Yeah. That's valid. Yeah. Yeah, everything's great. Do we have a winner? Looks good to me. Looks balanced. Look, I mean, it's far away from this dead center. All right, so the final, hopefully final piece of the puzzle would be the fan shroud, because without the shroud, you're basically sucking all this air in mm -hmm. inefficiently, right? Because it's gonna be pulling air from everywhere instead of, you know, directly through the radiator. I was told that the NA1 that shroud doesn't work. Yeah, I think it's just because of the res might hit the intercooler piping right here. Yeah. We can always kind of cut the res out and then run it external. It just might be a little ugly. Oh, I was right. I could probably push this in more. Get Oh, that's I gave you quite a quite bit. Quite a bit, yeah. Uh, <sighs> Come on. A little bit more pushing and it actually fits perfect. It's just touching the pipe. Like it's not pushing any pressure on it, but it's like you probably couldn't fit a credit card between there. That's okay. That's okay because <laughs> fluid in here really won't be that hot unless you actually overheat your car, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna actually bring your intake air temps, temps up anyways. So right now, this is just basically a big buffer zone between the hot stuff anyways. And this is intaking cool air. Exactly, so I do not think it's gonna affect my intake air temps at all. I had to clearance this piece right here for the upper hose. A little Dremel action. A little Dremel action, but besides that, any shroud will fit. The only issue is if you don't have a modified throttle body like this, mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll fit because it might be too long. But worst case, you cut this out. You know, not a big deal. If you take this, check this out, JZX boys. That looks OEM and I love it. Looks good. Good piece. It's time to fill this thing up with coolant and see if it can maintain. Operating temp. Nice. <laughs> there she is. Feels good. So probably the first major step of an engine swap after you get it plugged in is to make sure you can maintain operating temperature. Uh, it might sound easy to do, 
but it doesn't take much for the car to not be able to hold a certain temperature, which is very important. So let's let this thing warm up. Hopefully we can get it at one consistent temperature. And uh, once the coolant system gets some pressure in it, hopefully we don't have any new leaks. That would suck. Is the thermostat gonna open? I have really bad luck with thermostats not opening, so hopefully this time I got lucky. We'll see. We'll see. It sounds f***ing mean though. It does. You hear this thing in the background of you, and then you see this pull up. Yeah, and then this thing completely <laughs> Obviously, it's gonna get a lot quieter and more tame with the exhaust on, but. That sounds nuts. It runs, it runs. 170? 170. Love that. So, the thermostat in here should be like 175, so. I don't know. Clutch fans go crazy. It sounds good now, it sounds really good. It's so crazy to hear that coming from this thing that looks completely stock on the outside. Oh yeah. Like, I want to leave it stock on the outside for a little bit, but I, I have, my, my wheels are almost here. Good. So as soon as I show up, I'm going to want to slam it on the wheels, but... Uh, <laughs> but until then. Until then. All right. So we're one thing away from making this thing drivable, and that is a clutch pedal. <laughs> Gotta do it. Give it a good old Jay-Z rev. It's you good. Want me to, okay. It's good right. for the heart. It's good it for is, the soul. It feels good every time. Yeah, yeah. Give it a good one. Give it, let it eat. You know. Dude, I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> what? LS, LS is good, but listen, like, these don't make the kind of torque that LS is do. But when they hit, they hit, and it's like, it just puts a smile on your face. Every damn time. All right, so I hope I have the correct pedal stuff because I ordered it forever ago and I never checked to see if it works. Uh, I've right. had all this time. So we're gonna we're gonna find out. You're gonna see a very happy Jimmy or a very disappointed Jimmy very soon. So um, as far as the pedal goes, uh, they make an aftermarket pedal. I think Excessive makes this. It's a complete aftermarket pedal, which is pretty dope because trying to find OEM stuff obviously can be very difficult. Look how like simple this is. Very Toyota, very Toyota esque, right, B? Need that though. This looks like I the mean, most honestly, universal clutch pedal ever. So many OEM pedals are just flimsy as hell and weak. Yeah, and I, you stomp on this loud stick. <laughs> Uh, this should be the right mast. I ordered this stuff so long ago. Is it excessive? I think it's a whole kit and it was very affordable. Excessive probably has the most bang for the buck products yeah, out there. I've ever gotten from them is like good price and this great This is the quality. longest pedal. This looks like it's for an F-150. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing's as big as an F-150, so. All right, let's mock this up. As far as the firewall modifications go, usually you have to drill holes and all this nonsense, but with Toyota, they just put grommets in here. We knocked out the center one already, but even the side ones, it's just like a little rubber. You see that? Knock mm -hmm. them in there. Easiest thing ever. What the fuck? <laughs> right? Okay, BMW's Toyota don't sleep. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. BMW's easy to check. All right, so God here, damn, here's sense. the first issue though, right? So autos have bigger brake pedals. They're like more than double the size. So if you look down here, Tony, See how big this thing is? Yep. It's gonna get in the way, so we're gonna have to cut it. So, how much do we have to cut? In well, half. Probably in half, yeah. So the, the brake pedals usually end up being the same size as the clutch pedal, right? So we have the cover for the clutch pedal. We're gonna use this as a template. And uh, they tend to stay more far to the right. You could kind of tell by looking at photos of a manual pedal. You can also just buy a manual pedal if you want to spend the money. I don't think it's that expensive. Maybe, who knows? So, we're gonna use this. And we're gonna put it all the way to the right. We are going to use this as a template, right? So, if you want this to actually fit on, you're gonna have to cut a little bit more than this. So if you cut on the inside of this, the pedal should fit on. Like you should be able to slip one of these OEM covers on and you'll never know. Right. Rough cut it, looks like ass. And we're gonna clean it up with a flapper. Ah, don't look bad. <laughs> oh yeah. Looks like shit. Yeah, see? God, that looks like shit. Let's clean it up. All right, let's see if we can get this cover to fit. Look at that. 
It's like it never even happened. They'll never know. It's a manual chassis from the factory. All right, let's clean it up, get some spray paint on it, and manual brake pedal. <laughs> so then we have our master cylinder right here, which probably a good time to bench bleed it, but I'm gonna make things difficult for myself and not do that, so. Just go. Oh, that fits great. And we have three pedals, Sammy. Looks good from where I'm sitting. It looks pretty good. So I have to get another cover for the clutch pedal to make it look official, but not too bad. If anyone has a manual dead pedal, because I'm pretty sure the auto one is bigger because the clutch gets real close to it, let me know because I would uh, definitely love to have that. Send the link. The link. What? What link? <laughs> so the excessive kit comes with this line. It looks kind of cheap to be honest, but that's fine. Probably just shove it down there. You got it? Yeah, he's got it. Anything? No. Nope. Oh, I'm seeing bubbles. Yeah, that's what we want. It'll start picking up speed. A vacuum bleeder. It's got some suction to it, right? Speed. <laughs> it's got to suck the fluid through the system. A few moments later. Oh yeah, this is action stage five that I know. <laughs> so this is a uh, pull type clutch instead of a normal push type clutch. So uh, I don't know if pull type feels different than push type. We're gonna find out. It's my first time having one. Oh yeah, that's definitely an action stage five. All right, so it has a clutch now, which is crazy. Uh, we still gotta clean up the interior, but now it's time to figure out if this thing will drive itself, right? First 10 feet, big deal. Feel the, the, the trans feels a little tight right now, nice. so I'm hoping that that isn't. You'll be good. Yeah. First 10 feet. Here we go. Here we go. We need a filter on this thing because I'm not trying to get a rock on my brand new turbo. Red. This, this is from the Supra. We're not obviously keeping this. It's gonna be yeah, really, we could. The red. It's pretty ugly. No. I don't even know if it'll fit. Oh my god, it fits perfect. Exactly. <laughs> Look at that. Look how perfect that fits. Oh, it's made for red. 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 It's balanced. Oh god, that's. That's good. That's good. We were just I, saying just, we needed another red. Piece. It just makes me happy. Well, yeah, and there's red here too. We knew this was your plan all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes me happy though that this is for my Supra RIP. It's been a year since I bought that thing, like as of this week. It's been a year? It's been a year. It breaks my heart. That's a long time. I tried, guys. I tried really hard to get another Supra. Whatever. Got three S15s instead. So. Perfect. Um, <laughs> here's my four door Supra. Continuing on. <laughs> it honestly doesn't look that bad. It doesn't. I think it looks better in here than it looks in the Supra. It's fitting. It does. That's so funny. It looks like I did this on purpose. Uh, red battery because I already had it. It's a JDM battery, which hits. So I'm going to try and run that as long as I can. Uh, this is the only hydraulic hose we could find in the area. Factory. And then this we had laying around. So the universe decided my fate on this one. Here we go. You want to do it bad. Yeah. I don't make the turbo go. You gotta rev it real high. Is that cool? Yeah. Give it a sec. Because it feels so goofy at this height. 
just feels wrong. It looks goofy. Especially from the rear, it's like Ugh. so high up in the back. It's not that loud. Look at this, dude. Tore V. They would have never known. They would never know. Looks good. Now, fuel pump. Boom. Spoon. Boom. Dino. Boom. Bang. No bang. Just boom. No, a lot of. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah. Then we start working on the height and all that shit. And then we make it look good. Then engine bay looks good. I always do the, like, I usually do the engine bay first. I usually make the engine bay look good first, and then, then the outside can get it. You know, because it's about what's on the inside. For not sure. what's on the outside. The outside kind of matters, plus I, inside's I, important. You got it. You, you need a nice outside, outside, yeah. Car. Car. Girls, girls are cool. It's a little premature, but it now has a Turbo 1J, an R154 manual trans and black interior, so that kind of makes it like it. I, I got the wrong tool. Taurus Steve. Taurus Steve. It's no up. longer an S. She's a V now, boys. Steve, this is for you. It's an S for Steve. Thanks, bud. <laughs> so now I just need the V. We we'll get you a V. You get me a V. Cool. Birthday's coming up. Yeah. Sick. I want myself a birthday present. <laughs> oh boy. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, so before I leave you guys for today, uh, we want to finish up some of the manual swap here. So remember, we cut a big ass hole in my trans tunnel to fit the uh, manual shifter because the trans tunnel in the auto cars are actually different than a manual car. That's a very big giveaway if you want to know if it was manual converted, if it's cut or not, right? So to kind of convert it to a manual tunnel, they sell these fiberglass covers. You can get them on eBay. They actually fit really good. There's probably a million brands that make it, but I got mine on eBay. Only thing I did was I put this like foam insulation tape on it just so it's a better seal. And we take it and then boom, we have a manual trans tunnel. Easy as that. That's cool. That's a dope piece. Like I, props to like, imagine if they didn't make this piece, how annoying that would be. Just be open. Just be open. I'm just gonna use body fastener screws to kind of just hold that thing in place. Now it's got a pedal. Got a pedal. And a shifter. And a shifter. And now a tunnel. Yep, boom. So the last thing you need to seal this whole thing up is your kind of inner shift boot, whatever you want to consider it. It protects you from all the hot air and all the annoying noises coming from your trans tunnel. Unfortunately, I didn't order the right one. I ordered a Mark III Super Run hoping it would fit just because everything else Toyota fits. <laughs> but it's like, the shifter needs to be thicker for a good seal and the bolt pattern's different. So don't order a Mark III Super One. You could probably get a Toro V1 brand new. Like, just do that. Yeah, I'm gonna. Just, you know, I don't want people to forget this piece. Because if you don't put this in, you're gonna have excessive road noise and excessive heat. So you don't want that. So don't forget this part, all right? I'm not forgetting it. I'm showing you guys right now. You know, cars are a lot of damn parts. <laughs> Takes like, sounds easy, you know, to do all this stuff and then you gotta order so much damn stuff. So expensive. It ain't easy. <laughs> it ain't easy being cheesy. All right. Clean <laughs> bills. Look at that, dude. You know what's funny? Like, the shifter felt like it was poking up so damn high before, but now the center console's in, it feels super normal. You can almost put an Nardi in it. Almost. Very exciting stuff. <laughs> so I got a reproduction, like shifter bezel. And they're actually really nice. Like, these work cool. Oh, they do. Look, it doesn't it look really, really nice. It looks OEM. But it's the like only, spot on, kind of. It's like spot on. The only thing that sucks is the OEM stuff fades to like a uh, yellowy look to it. So it almost looks like Kevlar mm. more than carbon, which is kind of dope. But when you get brand new repop stuff, it doesn't really match. You see? See how this is dark? This is darker. Well, it's like more of like a yep. yellower. That looks so good. Damn. We just need like a shift knob that actually sits down. And then yeah. I need that shifter. Yeah. And I need that like boot to prevent all this road noise but look at that dude you'd never know you never know i nice know nice double din in here yeah nice double din nardy nardy and it dude it this is crazy to see look at that like it's crazy how much like fancier the car feels <laughs> i know we always use that word it's kind of a lame word but just feels insane having this in there now all right cool that's all i wanted to do today you did it we did it like yeah comment and subscribe <laughs> stay tuned all right so <laughs> tomorrow we bring this thing to spoons we get the exhaust on it'll be sounding super nice and tamed for a street car but it'll still have some jay-z noises and uh then we hit the dyno so for now you guys know the deal like comment subscribe stay tuned for more content
Steve, have a good night. <laughs>